people kind of think of autonomy as being the, the idle engine, but you guys are doing a whole lot more than that. Yeah, well, you know, autonomy is a really big business. We're um, close to a billion dollars a year in revenue. So we've got, you know, businesses across everything from information governance to electronic discovery to, uh, you know, uh, information analytics and data protection. And I think, you know, one of the things that we're showcasing here at Discover is the latest release of Data Protector 8.1. So outside of the whole what does IDLE do and meaning-based computing and those sort of things, Data Protector, uh, you know, we've really taken the backup business, which is a very sleepy one, really. I mean, I don't mean to say it. I don't mean all you guys out there who do backup is not, but it, it, people have kind of forgotten about it. Uh, and it's, it's you, your backups just take longer and longer all the time. So what we've done is, is with, with Data Protector, which is incorporated with our Store One's product as well. Uh, it's we've introduced adaptive backup and recovery, which means that any of the alerts or or things that are happening in your environment are automatically taken account on the next run. So instead of having to get a report and figure out what happened, it's actually analyzing that and adapting in real time. So we think it's a really a really big breakthrough for folks who are you know, struggling with backup or using sort of traditional backup methods. So. In that realm, so I mean, this is this is totally baked into Store One, so it's not like a standalone product where where you would just use it on its own. Well, you, it is a standalone product as well. So Data Protector ships this software, and you can use it. It's it's baked into Store Once, which is a great product because it also does helps us do dedupe at the at the perimeter, right? So that's part of what what's great about it is you you, know, you dedupe before you send it across for your remote offices. Um, but no, it's a standalone product. People use Data Protector uh, in and of itself, but of course, it works incredibly well with Store Once. Okay, and then you guys are also doing uh, a bunch of stuff around digital marketing, which is which is kind of my passion for, yeah. for autonomy. Yeah, um, yeah. In our marketing optimization group, we have launched what's called a digital marketing hub, and what we've done here is 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 built a service that allows you to aggregate information about your customer from all sorts of different sources, whatever you happen to be using, whether it's Marketo or Adobe or all of the your your campaign management software. Uh, and we can take all of those customer analytics, no matter where they come from, and give you the ability to di dynamically adapt campaigns to segments and dynamically adapt campaigns on the fly. And normally this is the kind of thing where you know, you, you know how to do this. You collect from lots of different sources, you get, you know, and you, you do some analysis and you decide what you're going to do. And it takes you weeks and maybe you adapt your website eventually. But um, we've tuned it together with the Optimus platform, which does, you know, does A-B testing and multivariate testing and all that. And it'll automatically adjust on the fly for you as well. So, so instead of uh, taking weeks to roll out a personalized campaign, you might get you it down do, to days or you get hours? Get down to days or hours in real time. So you see the analytics, you see them happening because you're looking at all of the sources aggregated in a way which you never would have been able to see before. So it's, it's really exciting. We launched it, gosh, I don't know, about a, two months ago uh, in New York, had a phenomenal reaction from the analysts. People think, I mean, it's, it, it is a different approach, but it's, it's um, you know, we think it's really a game changing approach for marketers. I mean, it's it's an approach that that it's we're all already doing it. Yeah. It's just yeah. uh, we're, it's right. it's like using spreadsheets or something to dedupe stuff. We'll see that, and it's it's funny you mention that because we've we've actually done a lot of core research in particular for this, right? So I mean, there's a lot of patents around Idle itself. We have data scientists and sort of incredible mathematicians who and a lot of deep patents, but we've got a few more now because of the work we've done on the digital marketing hub. So it's it's a very exciting application for us. And then on, in kind of a, a different realm of digital marketing, you've got uh, or, Erasmo, which yeah. I, I personally still don't quite understand the appeal, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's, it's taking off. Well, you know, you think about the way people interact with content and interact with the, 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 the flat printed world or even in their own life. Um, and you've seen the, the, you know, the, the, the ubiquity of the QR code. And Erasmo just does away with all of that. The image itself is what triggers you know, the, 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 the dynamic content. And, what we've done with Erasmus, we've turned it in from sort of like a neat G whiz thing into a real business. We've got now 20,000 customers. We've got blue chip companies who are running campaigns on it. You'll start to see it everywhere. It's really, really exciting for us. And, and from what I understand, the, the uh, click-through rates from these oh, are, are yeah. phenomenal? Yeah, so, and for, so for those of you who don't know what Erasmus does, it, it, we've got software that resides on your, on your device, right? And whether it's your phone, your, you know, your tablet, whatever it is, and it recognizes images in the real world, so I can hold it up to this HP logo. I can I say, do you, do you have it on your phone? Could we do it on the HP I logo? Do actually, uh, I can do it on a dollar bill for you or anything else you like if we do that. But what happens is then, it, because we're doing image recognition, the same way that you know autonomy is, is very, very deep in this space, right? We're going to do facial recognition and license plates. And if it matches, and by the way, that's not easy because it's sometimes a sideways, sometimes it's got a little shadow on it, like it's never yeah. you know, the perfect match, but it's still, it's close enough, and so it'll trigger the image and 
play video content in real time on top of that. And you can interact with the video content. So you can understand from, say, I open a magazine and I really like this article, I can hold my phone over it and actually see the interview live. Or I open a newspaper and there's a sporting section and I want to see what happened, I can put the phone over it and watch the clip. Okay, so we have customers now who are lighting up entire magazines and the click-through rate is 70%. Now, you know about the click-through rate, I mean, it's in the, in the low one, you know, low yeah. single digits if you're lucky. And we don't know if that's just like people are so enthused about, the, you know, they've never seen it before and so they're clicking through, but it's, it's a really exciting business for us right now. The thing that I would think it would be uh, interesting for would be like, say, say movie posters or band right. posters. So we do a ton of business on Erasmus with, um, with both Universal Studios and 20th Century Fox, uh, same kind of thing, you know, timely content. Uh, where you know people want to see what it is and uh, there's a lot of people also companies who are you know delivering pretty creative business models around it whether it's museum tours or you know those sort of things and they're, and they're, they're building entire applications around it it's great it's a really fun business and then the, the fourth thing that I think uh, that, that you guys are talking about here I discover that is also cool is idle on demand. So you don't yeah. so you don't have to just buy the idle engine outright. Well, yeah. So you know what idle specialize at is is understanding nuance and concepts and context inside noisy information, it's like human information, like this conversation, right? If somebody said, "Hey, what did Brian and Jake talk about?" Well, you'd have to listen to it. But idle could actually unpack that and say, "Well, they talked about these ideas." And so it's got 500 functions built into it. It's a very deep, rich platform. But the problem you know, we're trying to overcome is you have to invest in it, you have to build it, you have to put the content in it. So now what we've done is we're going to host Idle. We do host Idle in the cloud, and we've exposed those services as an API layer. So I can, as a programmer, say, I've got an image, submit it, and it'll come back and say, yeah, it's got two children and three animals in it and, and one adult. So it'll categorize the, what's in the photo, for example, or the sentiment of this particular paragraph or this document. It'll code it out. So sentiment analysis, eduction, and what that does is it pulls out the key concepts and the ideas and the people. So as a programmer, I can build applications on the fly. Like for example, we did one, I think it was, what was it? That was, did I tell you about the Jeopardy one we did? Oh, you didn't? Oh, this is great. So when we started doing Idle On Demand, uh, we put a bunch of very clever developers in a room and fed them a bunch of pizza and said, all right, guys, you, you do whatever you want for a day. All right, and we're going to give you Wikipedia. That's what you get. You get we're going to index that for you. We'll set up the infrastructure to index Wikipedia. And you can get anything you want to do anything you want. So a couple of guys went and got, you know, Jeopardy has a feed that you can get and you can go to Jeopardy and say, Qu next question, next question, and kind of play Jeopardy. And so they took those questions and started and did a little bit of messing with sort of how the data comes back out of idle, but were able to get an 80% correct rate on Jeopardy questions just from what idle knows about Wikipedia. Uh, and so it was, it was one of those use cases where you know, the difference between language models and and, uh, and probability models comes out really strong. Because, I mean, look, I mean, IBM took, what, how many years to build Watson and how many PhDs and how many servers and... Well, and you know, and the, the other 20% could have been all, all the errors in Wikipedia. I mean, you never know. <laughs> but the cool thing about, you know, the cool thing about Jeopardy is that, is that because the, the question is asked in a form of a question, the more data you give idle, the more relationships it has to calculate on. And so because it's giving you a full sentence, we can go and analyze the likelihood that the answer is these relationships or those relationships, and it's pretty amazing. That is pretty awesome. So we hope that people will use that. It's on an, an early release, um, you know, uh, program right now, and in the middle of by the middle of next year, we'll have it readily available to the public. And that's and that's going to be an API. Yeah, it's a service layer. So we intend for developers to be able to put that into their code, build applications on it. Uh, we've got a lot of great examples of just quickie applications that we built for Grins just to see if we could do it, like the Jeopardy one and a couple other ones on showcase here. All right, well, thanks, Brian. Yeah, you bet. It's great talking to you, Jake.